Hey, what's up creators? It's Mike from Production Crate. And today I'm gonna to show you guys how to do uh, this. So what I'm using right now to make this face animation is a really cool program by NVIDIA called Audio to Face. And what it does is it uses AI to generate automatic face animations based on just sound clips. The best part about it is it's really simple, really quick. Let me show you guys how to do it. Okay, so let me show you guys how to get this set up. First, you're gonna wanna go download whatever character you wanna work on. I'm gonna use this guy from our store. And you also wanna download NVIDIA's Omniverse. Now, when you get Omniverse, it's kind of a, a suite. So you wanna download Audio to Face, which is inside of it. And then you wanna launch that. So this is what you get when you open up Omniverse. And let's just take a quick tour and then we'll process the superhero character and import him into here. So it comes with this default head and um, it's already set up. You can just press play and it plays this sound clip. The beige hue on the waters of the lock impressed all, including the French queen. And what's awesome about that is, as I mentioned, it's all AI driven. It's just driven by the sound. There's no animator who made that motion happen. Let's export the superhero character and bring him into here. So jump back into whichever program you're using. And I really only need to export just the body, or even if his body and his head are separated, then just export the head. Just the part that's talking. In this guy's case, his head is connected to his body, so I'm gonna export everything. I'm gonna click on his body, and I'm gonna go File, Export Selection, or the equivalent in your program. And I'm gonna export a USD file. Um, I haven't tried this with other types of sort of universal cache files. It might work with an OBJ. It might work with an FBX. I haven't tried it. Uh, in the documentation, they mentioned the USD, so that's what I'm using. So I'm gonna navigate to my folder here, and I'm gonna make myself a little audio to face folder. And I'll call this um, hero export. All right, let's hop back over into audio to face. And in here, I'm just gonna go file open and let's navigate to that folder. Here it is, I'm gonna import that. And I'm just gonna say, don't save. When you import it, it may be hard to see. It might be that the material is dark or the lights aren't turned on, but if you click in the middle of the scene, you can see where your character is. I can see that he's just either black or the lights are turned off. Let's try adding a light to the scene and see what happens. So I'll go create light, distant light, and I can see something popping up. He's just uh, really dark. So let's create a new material and apply it to him. Just some gray material will be fine. I'm gonna go click on his body and then go create material Omni PBR. Now, if it doesn't apply to his body, it might be because this character has multiple materials. He has different texture sets. So he's got his head material and his body material. And we can actually see that right here. See these different SGs, these are different shader groups. So I'm gonna just drag and drop the Omni PBR onto my superhero and replace all four of these. In this case, this character has four. So let's click on this one and just replace it. And I'll keep dragging and dropping Omni PBR onto him until I've replaced all of these male superhero base materials. There we go, finally, we just need the head. Now the way this program works is it has that pre-animated male head. And what we do is we sort of are going to shrink wrap our character onto it. That character is gonna talk and it's gonna drive our character like it's wearing a mask. It's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and bring that default character back into the scene. And we're gonna sort of map the different points on their faces so the computer knows which points go together. So if I go over to the character transfer tab, I'm gonna add a male template right here. So in my case, they popped up sort of inside of the superhero's head. Depending on where your original character was in the scene and how big it was, these heads could pop up maybe way up here or down below, and they could be any size really. So what you wanna do is go over into your outliner or your stage, and you wanna open up character transfer and select mark and mark open mouth, and just kind of move them out like this. Now you don't have to resize them. It won't change anything if they're a different size, but I like to resize it so they're roughly the same size, especially if they're way off. Let's go ahead and just uh, make that roughly the same size. And let's grab the green one, which is mark open mouth, and just put that over here on the other side. Okay, so I'm going to jump over to the audio to face tab now. So here in the character transfer tab, we can see that the driver mesh is mark, which is this one here. That's the one that's going to be animated. We also need a target mesh, which is our character. So I'm going to say target mesh is male superhero base right here. And then you can see the open mouth mesh. It automatically picks the last one, mark open mouth. Next step is to click add mode right here under mesh fitting. And now we're gonna do is go around and click common points between the two faces so the computer knows what's what. Cause to the computer, these are just a cloud of vertices. It doesn't know that that's supposed to be a nose and that's an eye socket. So we need to tell it. Let's start on this green one and I'm gonna click just the tip of his nose right there and then click the same point on our model. And I like to grab these little nooks and crannies on the corner of the nose right here. There's no set points that you need to pick, but I'm just kind of going by which parts I think are important. 
So I'm grabbing the tip of his chin because it's sort of, you know, it goes up and down when you talk. Now I have had trouble where the nostrils get messed up. So I'm going to make sure that I get the deep inside of the nostrils. Uh, let's do right in between the eyebrows and then kind of the middle of each eyebrow is good. Now I'm going to do the tear duct for each eye and the outer corner for each eye. And let's actually do the center of the lower and upper eyelid for each eye too. I'm also gonna put one in front of the ear. When I was watching the documentation for this program, that's what a lot of people were doing, so I'm just gonna go ahead and trust them. The other issue that I ran into is I, I did a creature and it has a long jaw and the corner of the jaw wasn't moving right. So I'm gonna make sure I just add those points too. It's probably unnecessary on a human, but if your character is very unhuman, you might wanna select more points around the jaw. So this is pretty good. I'm gonna hit done adding when I'm done putting points. Now, if you messed up and you realize uh, maybe one of them's a little bit off, uh, this is never set in stone. You can delete points here or you can go to edit mode and just move them around and then I'll zoom in over here and I can drag these points and just get them a little closer make sure they match on the two different models and then hit done editing so the next step is to click begin mesh fitting now this might take a sec so make sure you like the video and subscribe to make it go faster all right guys so my processing finished I'm noticing a lot of issues here and I realized, I think it's because I forgot to place points around the mouth. Notice a huge issue or something that goes wrong. Um, just go ahead and hit delete setup right here and it will let you start over. And I can go to add mode and start adding those points around the mouth that I totally forgot. So let's just do that real quick. Just uh, corners of the mouth, upper lip, lower lip, and then the outside corner of the mouth here. I did notice something wrong with the ears. So I'm just gonna be safe and place some points on the ears too. So again, press done adding and then hit begin mesh fitting and let it update. All right, so the mesh fitting just finished. It looks okay, you might see some weirdness. Um, and what this is, it's actually his entire body kind of squished up and stuck to his face. <laughs> uh, that's just what happens when you have extra parts that aren't part of the head. For now, I'm just gonna accept it and I'm gonna click on begin post wrap. This might take a second too. So the reason that happens is because it doesn't really know what to do with all the body parts that aren't the face. So it just kind of like scrunches them up and sticks them all over the place. But you can see once I hit uh, post wrap, it looks fine. Cool, so theoretically it's done and we can test it now. So I'm gonna click on this guy here and I'm gonna go to the audio to face tab and I'm gonna click on add A2F pipeline and I'm gonna say yes, attach. And we should see them both kind of twitch. So what's gonna happen is it's, it's animating this default head and because it knows which points on our model are associated and, and line up with the default head, it's gonna kind of drive our character at the same time as if he's wearing a mask. So we can actually kind of just scrub through this audio and see that our character's face is moving and it's really cool. I'm just gonna zoom out really quick to make sure nothing else on his body is moving. Yeah, so it's not messing up his fingers or anything else. So now we can start testing it and having some fun. I'm gonna go to the character transfer tab and I'm gonna uncheck correspondence visibility just to get rid of those dots. And then if we don't wanna see the original mark heads, we can click this character transfer folder and hit the little eyeball. Let's go back to the audio to face tab and we can press play and we can hear the audio and watch his face move. The beige hue on the waters of the lock impressed all including the French queen. Kind of a dumb sound clip, um, but you can import your own as long as it's a wave format. I went online and I found a couple samples from video games. Let's just test out something a little more fun. Feast on their flesh. Pretty cool, right? All right, so I'm just gonna go back to that default audio clip because it's super clean and um, I don't wanna mess with any of like the background noises that are happening in my room. So down here, we can change a lot about how the face moves. Let's say you want it to be a, a lot more exaggerated. You can see here we have the upper face strength and the lower face strength, and we can exaggerate the face in different sections. So I'm gonna crank this up, and if I press play, the beige hue on the waters of the lock and We're getting some strange results, huh? I'm gonna set that back to default. So another thing we can do beyond just the strength of the lower face and the upper face is we can adjust the smoothing of the upper and lower face as well. So if I crank up just the strength of this lower face and I press play, you on the waters of the lock and you can see it might be a little bit twitchy depending on the audio that you have. Maybe you recorded your own audio and there's some background noise, room noise, and that can make the mouth just kind of like do this. So you might want to crank up the lower face smoothing. If you go too high, his mouth won't move at all. So let's see what happens if I crank it up too high. Impressed all, including the French queen before she heard that symphony again. You can see it's just, it doesn't have enough movement. So it's a, it's a balancing act. 
Now we can also change the expression and this is really cool. So down here under the emotion, there's the source shot and the source frame. These are kind of just different expressions that the, I guess an actor made. But if I click on a different one like G1A, so he looks a little bit angry and I can see source frame, I can kind of roll it through different expressions for a different uh, starting position. If we start here where his mouth is closed, then I press play, he's gonna say the same line, but he'll look angry. The beige hue on the waters of the lock impressed all. Now if I scrub here to a frame where his mouth is open, that's the starting position and his mouth will never close right. So if you have a character who has big teeth, like an orc or something, you might want to do this because if the lips close, it doesn't really make sense because he's got these tusks sticking out. So it's just a way you can refine your character. Let's try one more. I'm going to pick a random expression, like it's kind of a sad one. And I'm going to do one where his mouth is really pressed closed, like that. And now we see how his mouth looks all tight. Let's see how that changes the animation. The beige hue on the waters of the lock impressed all, including the French queen. Pretty cool. I'm gonna set everything back to default. How do we get this data out of the program and into our 3D package? Well, I'm gonna click on the character's head and I'm gonna go to data conversion tab up here. And I'm gonna say export filter. Let's switch that from visible meshes to just selected meshes. I'm going to choose where I want to export it. I'm going to place it back into that same folder where I previously exported that USD. So I'll select that folder and where it says file name A2F cache, I'm going to make it something more specific. Uh, where it says playback FPS, this isn't actually the speed that it plays at. It increases the quality of your animation. Here where it says export as USD cache, that's kind of a more universal format. But since I'm using Maya, I'm going to use a Maya cache. You can choose whichever one works best for you. And I'll press export. It's going to run through the animation really quick. Okay, it's done. Let's go ahead and pop back into Maya. And here we are in the original scene with just the raw FBX, how it comes down from production crate. And if I look at it, I can see that there's some joints inside. He's rigged. Now I'm, I'm gonna get the animation I just did attached to this rig, and I'm gonna do it in a way that's probably sort of proprietary to Maya. Each program is gonna have a similar concept for how this works, but the specifics are gonna be up to you guys to figure out. So I'm just gonna hide this cape because I don't need it. And I'm gonna go File, Import, and I'm gonna grab that USD that I exported. So here's the USD that I exported. I'm gonna re-import it back into the scene. And here it is. It doesn't need to be moved, but I'm going to move it just so we can see it. Let's go ahead and make it just a default material for now. Now this is crucial. If you're going to move it off to the side, make sure you don't freeze transformations. Notice how over here where it says translate, it says uh, minus 110 units. I moved it over and I'm not going to zero it out. I'm going to leave it so that that number is there because I'm going to use a blend shape or it's also called a pose morph in other programs and it needs to know how to get back to the original character. So you don't want to zero out your transformations. You want to leave it. Let's click on our geometry and I'm going to go up to cache, geometry cache, import. Let's navigate to our folder. Here's my geometry cache that I just exported. If I zoom in on this character and press play, his face should start moving. Very cool. Now you could apply it technically directly to the rig, but I think that would cause problems because there's lots of other deformers on this model, like these bones and everything, right? So it's best to keep it separated and then use this mesh as a blend shape or a pose morph. So to do that in Maya, I'm gonna click on this first and then I'll click on my character and I'll go to deform blend shape. Now it won't work right away. If I press play, you can see it's not changing his face. So we need to go turn that on. So I'm gonna go up to windows, animation editor, shape editor, and you'll notice that it's all here. It's just not turned on. So I'll turn that on. Now if I press play, it's still not quite working. And this is just kind of a Maya specific quirk. But if I look, I can see his mouth is kind of trying to move. It's moving just a little bit. And that's to do with something called the deformation order. There's multiple deformers on this mesh. It's the skeleton and the uh, blend shape I just made. And the order that they're stacked on the mesh matters. So I'm gonna right click on his head and go to inputs, all inputs. And here I can see blend shape is at the top and then skin cluster, which is the skeleton and then tweak. Um, I'm gonna use the middle mouse button to drag blend shape down below skin cluster and press close. So now his mouth should move. And you can also test to make sure that his head still moves and rotates. Make sure that these, make sure that these joints still work. Now we do have a problem. This arises because uh, I'm new to this. <laughs> so I'm running into this problem here where his chin is moving, but his teeth don't move. And the reason for that is because of this point cache. It's not moving up and down because of this skeleton right here. You can see that this skeleton will also move the chin up and down. Now I don't want to manually do this and keyframe this every time his chin moves just so his teeth will move. So I'm going to do kind of a little workaround to animate a joint to make his teeth go up and down automatically. 
Again, this is specific to Maya, but the concept could work in other programs. So share your knowledge in the comments if you know a better way. I don't want to actually move this joint because as you can see, if I move it, it'll sort of double rotate when his uh, when the animation starts playing because his chin is moving downward because of the animation and it's moving downward because of the joints. We're getting some double rotation. We definitely don't want that. So I'm going to create actually a second joint chain for his chin just right next to that original one. And that's going to drive just the teeth. So let's go into the side view here, turn on my x-ray joints, and I'm going to create a parallel joint chain, just these two joints. I'm going to imitate them. So let's go up to skeleton, create joint, and you can place these joints right on top of the other joints, but just to illustrate what's going on so you guys can see in the video, I'm just going to place the joint like right next to it, but it's probably better practice to actually place it right on top. So now this is a joint chain that just kind of moves, doesn't affect the model at all. It's just there. Let's actually parent that to the original jaw rotate. So what I've got here is this little jaw that doesn't do anything, but it follows the original jaw like that. And that looks like something's left behind, but that's actually just the other copy over here. You can see that when the original jaw moves, the second one moves as well. What I need to do is take away the influence of this original joint from the teeth so that they follow the new chain, not the old one. So I'm going to go in there and I'm going to try to select his teeth and I'm going to detach it from the skeleton. Again, this is a Maya specific solution, but the concept should be the same in every other program that you guys are using. So I've got his lower teeth selected and I'm going to go skin, unbind skin. So now they're not bound to that original joint. Now let's bind it to the new one. So I'll click on that new joint, that one right there, and I'm going to click on my lower teeth and I'm going to go skin, bind skin. And I'll just use the default settings. So let's go ahead and test it out. I'm going to go to my x-ray mode and if I move that new joint right there, the teeth should be attached to it. If I go to x-ray mode, you can see the lower teeth move, but it's not affecting the skin, which is good. I was trying to separate the, the motion of the skin from the teeth so that this face animation we did can actually drive the teeth up and down. Okay, next step is to create an IK handle from this joint to that one. Those of you familiar with rigs will know what that means, but those of you not, it's okay. You can just follow the steps. <laughs> I'm going to go skeleton, create IK handle. Let's go to the options right here, the little box. And just make sure that I'm using the single chain solver. Click on that little guy right there and then click on the end. What this does for us is it creates this thing right here called an IK handle that allows us to grab it and move it around. And you can see that joint is just going to stay pointed at it. And crucially, it doesn't stretch. So if I pull the IK handle away, the joint itself doesn't stretch out. It just stays pointed at it. You can see that the teeth, because they're parented to that joint, will follow. So now what I'm going to do is just kind of glue that little IK handle to his chin. So when his chin moves up and down, his teeth will move up and down. So I'm going to go to vertex mode. I'm going to select a few points on his chin, and then I'll shift select that IK handle. So I have the verts on his chin selected first, and then shift selected the IK handle. And then I'm going to go constrain point on poly. Let's go to the option box and just make sure we have the settings set right. Make sure that you have maintain offset check. That's very important. And I'll hit add. So now if he talks and his chin moves up and down, that IK handle is going to stay pointed at those verts and that'll make his teeth move up and down too. Let's test it out. You can see it's working. Now, a couple things that sometimes go wrong is sometimes the teeth, when they're going up and down, they twist this way, which obviously is not right. So again, if you guys are more technical than I am with Maya or any other program, and you can think of a better solution, definitely let us know. I would love to see it. Lastly, let's go ahead and get some sound in here. I'm going to go back into Omniverse, and so you can see this is the folder where they, where they keep their sounds. So I'm going to go navigate to that on my computer, and here's all their sounds. We can import that into Maya. So the way you do that in Maya is you right-click on the timeline, go to Audio, import audio, navigate to that folder. Here it is. There's the sound on the timeline. I'm going to give myself more frames. Now when I press play, we should see his mouth moving. The beige hue on the waters of the lock impressed all, including the French queen, nice. before she heard that symphony again, just as young Arthur wanted. So what's really cool about this is we can actually combine this technique with Mixamo. We can use these AI generated face animations and drop them right onto a mocap animation. So I've got my guy up here in Mixamo. And let's go ahead and just grab a talking animation. So I'm going to click download. Uh, with this one, I don't need to download the skin. I can just do the skeleton. Then we'll pop back over into Maya and we should just be able to press import and grab that animated FBX and it should just work. All right, moment of truth. The beige hue on the waters of the lock impressed all, including the French queen, before she heard that symphony again, just as young Arthur wanted. <laughs> it's pretty good, right? He thinks this conversation he's having is so interesting. Now let me show you guys one more really awesome thing. I just wanna show you guys that this technique can work on non-human characters too with very different proportions from humans. Um, here's a werewolf that we just uploaded to the store. Um, go check it out on RenderCrate. And you can see it looks awesome. When I press play, 
Feast on their flesh. Nice, let's go check that out fully rendered over in Marmoset. And you can see I've even paired it with some nice animations from Mixamo. So you can kind of make it look like he's maybe commanding his little underlings. Feast on their flesh. So I'm really excited to have discovered this program and uh, hopefully it gets you guys excited too. If you make anything cool, as always, just share it with us. Put it in the comments, go up on our Discord, whatever you do, as always, make it awesome.